Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements tutorial, we're going to add a person to a picture. The background is our picture, and this is a person taken from a different photo. Now, there's a lot of little touches to do to make this work out just right. Let me show you the original picture, so let's get this out of the way. There's the picture we're taking the girl from right there, and then there's the picture we'll be adding her into. You can see right off the first problem is that she's the wrong color. So we'll need to color balance the girl to make her fit into the image. We also, of course, need to clip her out of this picture. So you put her over there. And there's a little touch up back here. The back part of her hood is white. I don't really like that. So I fixed this section here and made that into fur. And I have some special tricks on doing that. So let's take a look and see how this whole thing is done. I'll be using this picture as the base picture and we'll then just add this picture over into this. Easy to do. Just grab the background layer, drag it over and drop it on. I can now get rid of that. There we go. Yeah, let's hide that one. Once you have it in here, you need to see if it's the right size or not. Kind of get a rough position for that. I'm just going to increase our size here so you can see this better. Here we go and we'll zoom in. There it is. The easiest way to do this, and what I normally do, is I'll go through and I'll do a real rough cutout, or in actuality, I come in and I do a layer mask on that, and then that allows me to see how well it works. Now, this little bit of hair right there, that is a problem. I'm just going to cut past that hair and just lose that little bit, and that'll clean the picture up a little bit. Let's go ahead and do this. I'll be using the standard lasso tool and I'll just come out just a little ways like this and just do a quick little lasso and I'll just lop off that bit of hair right there and then around the bottom and then outside of the fur around the back side of the hat and back to the beginning there's my basic selection we can now go over here there's the Layer that the girl is on. I'm just type that in here. There we go, girl. And then click on the add layer mask button. It takes that selection and makes it into a layer mask. Now it's pretty easy for us to visualize the size of that we want this on the image. So you can increase or decrease your size a little bit by using the control handles in here. And if you go to the corner and you get that double arrow diagonal. That allows you to change proportionally and everything will look just fine. If you pull on this side or this side, you're going to stretch or squish the picture. So always drag from the corners. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. The position is nice, actually fits in very nicely. I'll bring it back just a little ways. So we'll need to come in and clean up this layer mask to get rid of that. We'll then have to color balance the image so that she looks like she's actually part of this scene. We then need to add a orange highlight along this edge for light from the sun. And then I want to fix that bit back there. I have a special trick on how to do that that you'll want to see. Okay, the easy part, let's go ahead and we'll clean this up. Now we already have this cut out and I left a bit of space in there on purpose so I could do this. Go over to the layer mask, right click and add mask to selection. That then just gives you that selection back again. Once you have that selection, we can then use our standard Refine Edge tool and clean that up. So select Refine Edge. There's a Refine Edge tool. Now, right now, I have mine set at 75. It's pretty large. But I think that's OK. It actually looks like it fits OK. So I'll leave that at 75. The default is 35. I have mine larger from my previous project I was working on. We'll leave all of these other settings alone, just leave everything as is, and we'll go right to using the refine edge. Now to use this, simply take that plus sign and 
put that in the part that you want to get rid of, where you want to hide, and then overlap that circle onto the part that you want to keep. What this does is it tells Photoshop Elements where you want it to double check and try to find an edge. It's going to find edges that have a high contrast like this and a color contrast. And it'll do a real nice job on that. Be a bit of a problem up in here because the background is very close to the color of the hat and it may have some problems on some of these dark against dark areas. It's going to do a great job over in here with the fur. Now down here is dark fur against dark fur. We'll see how that turns out. And then up here we'll go ahead and leave it. We'll have to manually fix that section. So as always when you use the refined edge tool you're going to have to come in and do some adjustment afterwards on the layer mask. Okay I'm going to start right there and I'll just pull this right along the edge just like that and let go and where it's gone red that's where the layer mask has come in. Notice it's spilled into her hat a little bit right there. We'll fix that and let's now do the top part of the hat and around the back side and the fur and finish it off. Okay, if you missed a spot like that, just go ahead and hit those. It should catch those. If it doesn't, we can fix that when we're fixing the mask. Okay, pretty good. It kind of messed up up here. That's all right. Now we want to take this and take it to a new layer with layer mask and choose OK. I did that on purpose so that we can always go back to our previous step if I want this. This is step one. This one's step two. And as you can see here, there are some problems. It's a bit of a transparent through here. It didn't really clean that up. We can clean it up on the layer mask. There's that bit. We can clean that up. Not a big deal. Did a good job on the fur. That's fine. We'll take care of that manually later on. It's a little bit of a spill through over in here and up in there. But it's all fixable stuff. Now, if you look at the layer mask, the black is hiding the original image. The white is showing the original image. And where there are gray tones, or we're getting a transparency. So you want to use black to clean up the area we want to hide and we want to use white to clean up the areas we want to fix. So we'll be using black and white paintbrush. There we are. Back to the paintbrush. There's a paintbrush size. It's kind of small. Let's just increase that size a bit. I think 50... Maybe we'll come down to 25, 24. We'll do the edge first. I'm using a soft edge brush. The reason I'm going smaller is because with a soft edge brush, it's going to be a bit fuzzy on the edge. The smaller the pixel amount, the thinner that fuzzy edge is. And that'll help us to blend in the edge here. So it'll need to be done in fairly close. So I'm just going to go ahead and dock this in place like that. And let's zoom in. We'll start on the hat is the easiest part here. And you want to be on the layer mask. Notice the light blue outline. Grab the paint tool. I want black. Mine set at 24 pixels, soft edge. And I can now come in and just paint over the transparent areas and we'll then fix those. I want to come in against the hat, but I don't want to take out too much of that. I want to keep it you know, as much detail as I can on that edge. It'll go a little bit softer, but it should be fine. Okay, so that's the technique. And it's just a matter of going around and erasing out or hiding the parts where it didn't quite get caught properly by their fine edge. This is typical of their fine edge too. I'm going to soften this up just a little bit here because it's a little bit too, too much detail in there. Again, this is a standard problem with their fine edge. It, it's never perfect. Well, I shouldn't say never. Sometimes I have seen it be perfect, but most of the time with their fine edge, you're going to have to come back and do a little bit of cleanup work on your image. But that's okay. It's easy to do, as you can see. Just zoom in and use black to hide and white to show. There we go. We'll fix that in just a minute. Just trying to get rid of the outside stuff and do the edge first. So I'm going to be doing the outside area 
with black paint first and we'll then come in and do the inside area with white paint. Now to move the picture around the easy way is to hold the space bar down you can then just drag it around let go and you're back onto your paintbrush tool again. Looks like we're okay out there. Don't really see anything in here that looks fine. It does a good job when there's enough contrast like this. There's a little bit in there you can see a little bit of that in there where the refined edge was giving us a bit of a transparency but that's okay. Getting in there that's where that hair was sticking out so that solved that nicely. Now a little bit of a light edge on her figure here is okay because there is a bright light in the background anyway. That will just appear to be part of that. So it's just a matter of going around and cleaning up the edge that was created by the Refine Mask Refine Edge tool. Okay, that's the front side. Let's now just take a look at the back side, see what we have to deal with. There's the hair. Let me see what we've got here. There's a little bit in there. It's almost the same color actually on both pictures. That's just kind of lucky. Now that looks good. The hair looks good in there. That looks fine. Now this little bit there, we can get rid of that. There's that light bit that I didn't catch. I can get rid of that easily enough. Looks like we're okay out here. Some little spots in there on the edge of the fur. I'll just take those out. Now in this, I don't want to have that white bit. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to come in like that and just kind of erase this white. And again, we'll have come in and we'll fix this with another technique that I've got, which is really interesting. You'll like like it when, when you see it. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's just stop. Went a little too far there. There we go. Alright, I think we have taken care of the outside. Let's now switch our colors. So white is a new foreground color and let's just go along and take a look at the edge. Okay, right here I think it's needs to be fixed. So we'll come along that section in there. That's pretty good. So exactly the same thing. I'm just working on the inside this time instead of the outside. So you do the outside first, then come back in and do the inside. And I think we're okay clear down along this edge. A little bit right in there. We can fix that. And again, same thing, just go clear around and look at the edge for transparencies. Now it gets kind of hard to see sometimes if you take out the background, hide the background, then it's real easy to see where your transparencies are. You know, our little problems, there's a little bit of darkening in there. So this is back on the black side, so we'll reverse to black and let's just clean that little bit up out there. There we go. And just a little cleanup in there. That's fine. This is all transparent, so that will blend in nicely. It all looks good there. A little bit right in there. Now it's worth it to take the time to do a good job on the layer mask. Everything else in the image depends upon a good layer mask. This is what makes the whole thing work. Everything else is pretty straightforward, easy to do. This is the only part that you need to be careful about. Okay, I'm now seeing some transparency problems in here. So let's switch to white because we're inside of our image. And I'll come over those areas and bring that back in again. There we go. And it's just a matter of going back and forth and just cleaning up the edge where it needs to be cleaned up. A little easier to see now that we have that background out of the way. It's a little, little shadow right there. And back to black again. There we go. A little bit of shadowing in there. And I think we're just about, just about there. Okay, let's check the back side again. Okay, now I can really see the problems in here. It was hard to see because it was dark on dark. 
and really wasn't going to be showing the picture anyway, but we might as well do a good job. And I'll clean around here, just a little bit of cleanup. That's okay. And a little bit of white right in there. You are still in the layer mask. And clean that bit up. And there we go. That's it. We're done. Okay, so now zoom out. Looks good. Bring our picture back in again. Okay, so we need to fix that. And we need to color balance. We'll do our color balance first. And then I want to do a highlight along this edge. And then we'll take care of that. Color balance, we'll leave it at this size. That's fine. Now for the color balance, go over here to the image side. And then we're going to be doing a, an adjustment layer right here. And you want to use a photo filter. Clip this with the previous layer right there. Choose OK. And it's already pretty good as you can see. At the top here, there are three warming filters, 85, LBA, and 81. Each one has a slightly different color to it. You can see the color right there. On this image, I happen to like the 85. This is a good close match to the orange that's in this area here, so I'll use the 85. Now it's a matter of coming in and adjusting the density of this. And for this picture, I want her to be a little bit on the darker side because it's kind of a dark picture, so she should be a little bit darker. That's fine. And then have the nice orange showing in there. Now in Preserve Luminosity, this is going to keep the brights in there. See how it has kind of a fake look to it, though? This looks more realistic if she's a bit darker because, again, it's a dark scene. So that works out fine. So that brings our color in. Okay, close that down. Now if I hide that, there it is before the color correction. Here it is with a color correction. You see how that really blends her into the picture now that she is the right color. So her eyes say, okay, that's the right orange. She's colored orange. Background's orange. That all makes sense. Okay, now we want to have an orange layer or a line right along in here. We'll then blend that in to the image. Let's do a new layer up here. There we go. Come down to our colors and let's choose an orange, something you know, right in here. I want a bit of an orange, not too yellow on that, kind of out there. That's pretty good. So that's taken right off of the sun so that actually matches our colors exactly. And choose OK. Back to our paintbrush. Leave it at the soft brush, and let's bring the size up so we can see that brush. See, there's the brush size. That's pretty good. So I just want just the edge. And I'm now going to paint right along that edge, just like that, just right along the edge. There we go. That's all you need to do. Now it looks awful, of course, so let's fix this. Come down here to the layer mask. Hold the Alt key down and drag that up to that new layer. That then puts the layer mask onto that and clips that to her figure so it's not spilling onto the background any longer. We now need to blend this into her image. We'll use that with the blending modes up here. Come down to Overlay, and that just blends that in like that. So we have different options here. You have Overlay, you know, Darken, Multiply. These different things will do different things for you. Soft light is not too bad. Hard light is just awful. Vivid light. Most of the time, on most things, you'll find the overlay or the soft light works the best to give you that highlighting. I kind of like the soft light up here. It's actually not too bad. Or the overlay. Overlay is a bit brighter, as you can see. I'm going to soften this up a little bit, soften the edge up a little bit. So we'll come over here to the image side and filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Let me bring this way down to the bottom. And with this I can kind of blur that orange line out a little bit. There we are beginning to go. So I'm just making it kind of fuzzy in there and that then softens up that edge and looks much more naturalistic. So there we go. There's the nice blurred edge on that. Now if it's too much for you, you can always come in and adjust the opacity as well. 
take out or bring back in the effect using the opacity. I'm going to leave it just a little bit stronger like that. It kind of lights up the face, which is nice. So there we go. There's that edge. The last thing to do now is to fix this section back here on her jacket. And I'll do that back on the jacket layer right here. I'll do a new layer above that because I want to have this layer underneath the photo filter. There we go. And we're going to be using a special brush and some clone stamp tool stuff. So we'll first zoom in in this area. Now we're going to be using the clone stamp tool in here to clone in some of this fur and then a special trick I have to give us that feathery stuff at the edges in here. So new layer. Now I want to have this layer not linked in as we have it here, not, not clipped into this image. So let's take this layer and pull it above the photo filter, right click and release clipping mask. There we are. So right there. We can now clone from this layer up to this layer. Kind of a fun trick. So come down here and we're starting our clone stamp tool. That's good. Alt key. Let's just grab something right, right there and then up to this layer and I can then clone in some of that stuff. So it's a matter of just going back and forth and cloning that in. Now we're seeing a little bit of a coloration shift in there and that's because we brought the mask in down below. So I'm going to grab from this picture and up to here and that doesn't have that particular problem. Okay, so that brought in some of that. We got a bit of this back up here again. That's fine. We'll just erase that back out again. Let's hide that. Back up to our new layer up here. Now I want to put in some new lines in here. And this is a special trick. We'll do another new layer. There we go. Reset the colors back to their default colors and we're going to be changing the brush. Now if you scroll way down on the standard brush set, way down below here, there are some grass brushes. There we go. It says 134. Now it has some randomness put into this as well. And let's just switch over here to the paint brush tool. There we go. Double click that sets that in. And if we paint this in, see how it has just kind of, kind of randomness in there? But it has those nice lines at the end. Don't worry about that color. We'll fix that in just a minute here. And just come in, just kind of paint in a little bit with this tool. And that gets back our kind of furry edge. I need to fix this a little bit down here. So let's change to the eraser tool. I have mine set about 100 pixels, soft edge, that's fine. I'm just going to erase the bottom parts here. So just have just those top parts sticking up. And now we need to fix the color of that. Our color is all wrong. So again, we're still on our layer now. I'm going to come down here. This is going to be the clone stamp layer. And this is the grass brush layer. So it's easy to see which one is which. We used our clone stamp down there to get this stuff fixed. And this is our grass brush to get that stuff up there. Let's now fix the coloration of this. Go up to the Enhance menu, Adjust Color, Hue Saturation. There we go. Click on Colorize, and it gives us all colors. I can now adjust my hue until I find a, a nice color that matches that pretty well. It's like right in here someplace. This is all different colors in there. Well, kind of just an orangey thing that that's a pretty good match right in there and adjust the saturation just a little bit and that's a pretty good looking match I think at that point okay last little bit now is just to darken that down a bit in here to blend that in better and we we'll use the burn tool right here bring up the 
brush size a bit. I just, I just want to hit some of those areas that are white in there and just darken that down a little bit. Looks pretty good. Last little bit in here to fix this is going to be a little more clone stamp. And we'll come back down here to the original. I'm going to grab just a little bit right over here and make sure we're on the right area. There we go. And then switch to the clone stamp tool and make sure we're on the right brush as well, of course. Soft brush. 100 is pretty good. No, 100 is too big. Now with the 200. Okay, 59 in there. 50s is fine. So again, we're on the original image down here. I'll grab a little bit, Alt and click right there. Let's now hide that layer up to the grass brush layer and just a little bit of this to help blend in that edge. And there we go. This is our nice little fake fur edge up in there. Now when we zoom out, you'll see how nice that looks. It just blends right into the picture in there. Okay, see how we did? I'll grab this and float this out here and pull it down a little bit to get the whole picture in there. And there we go, there's the whole picture. Now you may want to tweak a little bit on this. You bring the, the brightness down just a touch if you don't like it being that bright or even soften it up up here a little bit, leave it in the face, I think. And I'm going to do a, a slight adjustment on that. It's a little bit too harsh still. So let's do a couple of tweaks. I want a little tweak in here. And let's just pull this over so we can see that and see our tools and our layers. So that's our top layer up here. I'm just going to tone this part in there down. I think that's a bit too much. So I'll come up here onto the layer, on the layer mask for that. And we'll come back to our colors, black and paintbrush to change that back over to regular brush again. Zoom back up. Let's do a soft brush 27 to begin with, 45. Maybe I'll go much larger here. Maybe about 150 or so, I think. Always works if you just type it in. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm working on the layer mask. I'm just going to come in here and kind of knock that edge back a little bit. So I'm just adjusting our layer mask so that the orange isn't going to be quite as far into the hat. And I think that's all that needs. And then let's take a look at the edge down here. It's a little bit harsh in there. And that's our grass brush layer. So let's just soften that up a little bit with just a little bit of a Gaussian blur. And that should fix everything. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Obviously too much. Take it clear onto the bottom. See there's that grass effect right there. And I'm just going to slowly ease this up until it just softens it up just a little bit. That's pretty good. Kind of matches it down here now. So that softens up that edge. I think that's an improvement. It's a little harsh in here. We'll take care of this in a different different way, different manner. This is on the original image here. So I can't use my Gaussian Blur to blur the whole picture down. But what we can do is go over here to the Blur tool, which is right there. And I'll keep this so you can see that. And we can see our tools. I want to have this as a soft edge. And I'll bring that up to about 50 or so. And I'm just going to come in here and just, just tap those edges with that blur tool just a little bit. It just softens up the edges, takes that edge off of the whole thing. Okay, there we go. I think that's now good. All right, let's reposition our picture and see how we did here. I'll just stretch this out to a large size, and then we'll zoom it out to fit. That's pretty good. Back to our zoom tool. Alt key to zoom out. And there we go. So we've taken that girl, placed it into this new picture. We've fixed that back section in there on the fur. That looks good now. 
giving a nice glow along her face, took a bit off of the hat, and brought her into the picture. She now matches this picture. So there you go. That's how to take a person from one picture and add them into another picture. As you can see, it's really mostly about doing a careful layer mask to get that clip in there nicely, and then matching your colors and values. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 